Welcome everyone. My name is Maria Whitman and I'm the Managing Principal of Specialty Therapeutics and Oncology at CS Associates. We're here at ASCO 2015 to talk about the conversation of value as a decision driver in cancer care, a conversation that's gained a lot of prominence with our first ever plenary session on it today. That's why I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Michael Kolige, who is the National Medical Director for Oncology Solutions at Aetna. Welcome. Thank you. Doctor, this conversation of value in cancer care has been ongoing for some time. What advancements in the conversation do you see this year versus last? Well, for one thing, we're having the conversation. That's a big step in the right direction. Yes, it is. Um, you know, so we're really excited about immunotherapy and personalized medicine, and we have this ongoing discussion now in this country about the cost of care. And it is a topic that needs to be addressed in cancer care. And the reason it needs to be addressed in cancer care is because innovation is expensive. Yes. And what we don't want to do is get in a situation where a really, really effective therapy is denied to the appropriate patient. We want to make sure that we find a way to make sure the right patient has the right therapy at the right time. And only by having the value discussion are we going to assure ourselves that going forward we'll be able to continue to provide that service to our members for Aetna and our patients for their practice. I completely agree. I guess part of the question becomes, are there any novel approaches or advancements that you think actually might have an impact in yes. this conversation? This is the year of immunotherapy, it's clear, mm -hmm. um, and we're hearing about uh, evidence of efficacy both in common tumors like lung cancer and then uncommon tumors like hepatocellular carcinoma and head and neck cancer and yeah, so forth. Yeah. So uh, I think there's no question that this represents a, a clear therapeutic advance. Sometimes I am afraid the hype gets a little bit out of control. I mean if you look at the studies, and I do look at them in a, with, a, with a critical eye, it is definitely true that there are some patients who benefit tremendously nice. and it's unfortunately true that a lot of patients don't benefit mm -hmm. for very long or at all. So as we think about the, the value discussion for these novel therapies, to me, the most interesting abstract is the one that discusses the possibility that there's a marker for, for response sure. to therapy, the, 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 re, the report that mismatch repair genes may hold the key to understanding who benefits from these therapies. I agree with you. I think it's nice to see so many discoveries coming along with a biomarker. Do you think that we're at a point where the presence of that biomarker and the ability to distinguish patients is leading us to using value as a decision driver in that therapeutic treatment decision? Well, I certainly hope so. I mean, <laughs> um, so I think we, we have to be, you know, we have to be comfortable with the idea that uh, value should be part of this. That's not to say that we want to deny therapy. I think we want to recognize that there's a budget. We, we've unfortunately gotten in a, um, in a groove where every innovation is a wonderful innovation yeah. and we should pay for it no matter the cost. I don't think we can afford to do that anymore. I, I think what we really should be focusing on is how do we how do we pay for things that really, really make a difference? And the thing about immunotherapy is it is clear for some patients, it really, really makes a difference. So recognizing that we have to be willing to say things are roughly equivalent, there's also the question that you've raised yourself before about transparency and costs. Yes. And how can the actual oncologists on the ground be equipped to make those decisions? Are we, are we close to being there? So the sad truth is that most oncologists in practices, and I'll, I'll speak only to community oncology, um, because actually I think academics are even worse, um, <laughs> don't actually really know what things cost. Right. Um, not only do they not know what the sticker price is, if you will, they actually don't know what their therapeutic decision making, how their therapeutic decision making influences total cost of care. So we're starting to actually explore that at Aetna, and, and I know some of the other national commercial pairs are trying to get a better idea of if you make a therapeutic decision, what does that mean for the clinical outcome of the patient? What does it mean for the cost of care for the patient? I really appreciate that. I think it 
illustrates something that often gets lost, which is that value is a holistic conversation. Yes. It's not just about one part. At the same time, we have a lot of dialogue in the media around the drug costs specifically. And so as we're in the midst of this reform and this value conversation, what's the impact for drug utilization, for drug spending, for drug reimbursement uh, specifically? Yeah. So trend and oral oncolytics are 20% year over year at this right. point. And there have not been any really good management strategies in the specialty space. Um, but I saw some great data, and I'll, I'll have to give a shout out to my friends at Optum. I, I have some friends uh, in our competitors. And uh, they showed a really nice slide the other day that showed what has happened to the cost of taking care of a patient with CML since the introduction of imatinib. And what the slide shows, just absolutely beautifully, is that the patients are living much longer. Everybody knows that, right? right? Yep. The total cost of care has gone down substantially, but the percentage of that cost that That's is related true. to the specialty spend has gone up higher. Right. So the trade-off has been we spend more on the drug, but the plus is it's a very high value drug and we've driven down the total cost of care. And of course, outcomes have been much better. So that yeah. kind of work, so that's a, obviously that's a very special example. We need to start thinking a little bit about that, right? It, it goes right back to what you were saying about we have to be able to link it to outcomes. Yep. We have to be able to say this drug is doing something that is helping another portion of the value equation, yes. wherever it is. One more quick question, Doctor, as we go back to this question about the drug therapeutics. Um, are there any pieces of advice you have for manufacturers who you know, are looking to potentially be part of this equation and solution, ultimately? Yes. So they don't like when I say this, but I will say it anyways. <laughs> Please do. Regulatory endpoints are regulatory endpoints. They are not necessarily clinically meaningful endpoints or endpoints that will distinguish you as this value discussion, this value equation is applied to your product. Right. Think a little bit about unconventional endpoints. Think a little bit about how much an investment in a companion diagnostic or a biomarker is going to distinguish your product and give you an opportunity to have preferential placement on a therapeutic decision tree. Yep. Don't focus on approval. It's not <laughs> going to be all about approval anymore. It's going to change. It's going to change for sure. And so I think in summary, we can say that the value conversation is ongoing. We're yep. happy to be having it at ASCO 2015, but it's a broad conversation because it involves many parts and has to be linked to outcomes. Ultimately, it's going to have to be some sort of collaborative solution between the payers, the providers, and the manufacturers doing the things that And the patients. We can't and the leave patients. patients out of this discussion. You are right. And I think that um, we have tried very hard to engage the uh, patient advocacy community mm -hmm. in terms of understanding what their needs are, uh, looking at ways to capture patient reported outcomes to further round out our view on what the value of novel therapeutics are. So at the end of the day, actually, it's the patients who matter more than anybody else, right? That's why we're all here. Uh, that's right. Exactly. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining My me. Pleasure. It's been Thank a pleasure. You.